Ladies and gentlemen on this Red Game and Citicom video, I'm incredibly excited regarding rumours concerning the R9 390X, supposedly now known as Captain Jack. That's the code name that's going around in some leaked benchmarks. Now, I can't put the benchmarks in the video for the simple reason that leaks and stuff like that can be really dodgy on YouTube. So I'm going to go over all the results, but there's also a link in the video description if you want more information. So that's totally up to you, but I will go through everything anyway. So, here it is. AMD have been working on the 300 series for quite some time. Uh, NVIDIA, of course, released Maxwell, and while it was fairly impressive performance, we were kind of waiting to see what the 980 ties and what AMD had up their sleeve. Unless you really needed a graphics card, I was advising people to wait. A couple of, oh, about a month ago or so, AMD did announce that the 380X would be released in February 2015, of course. And they also announced a bunch of other cards, including the 390X. Now, it goes without saying that leaks happen in graphics cards um, in the GPU market, as well as CPUs. All of that stuff all has leaks. Now, one of the main leaks, uh, so within about two to four months before the cards released, you can generally expect leak slides or leaked something to show up, and, and we have it here. Basically, an amalgamation, a consolidation, basically, of multiple graphics card tests, um, which include Alien Isolation, Armor, Unity, Bioshock, Far Cry, uh, Shadow of Mordor, Rise, blah, blah, blah. Several, basically about 15 so games. I've not counted them, but roughly about that. Um, and they've done, they've consolidated all these tests and basically averaged the results. Now, here's what they've found. AMD have basically rabbit punched NVIDIA. Despite the fact that the card is drawing 12 watts more than... Now, you might be thinking, what, 12 watts more than the 290X? Holy crap, that's a lot of power. No, 12 watts more than the GTX 980. This unknown card, which is being referred to as Captain Jack, is 15%, over 15%, actually, faster than the 980. So, in short, it's 12 watts more expensive to run, but over 15% faster. So to clarify, it's getting 65.6 .6 frames per second, uh, the Captain Jack, once again, average, and the 980 is 56.6. .6. That is impressive, and I'll tell you why, because there are a couple of reasons. Firstly, AMD on the 290 range, and 290X in particular, were really bad on TDP. Um, there is actually load power consumption as well, which is graphics cards average, where they ran multiple games, including Rise, Battlefield 4, and a couple of others. And to give you an idea about this, Captain Jack is running 197, right? Um, what? Now, the 290X is running at 279. Meanwhile... The 980 is 185, so 12 watts more expensive, 12 watts, just a little bit hotter basically, so consuming just a little bit more power, runs just a little bit hotter than the 980, well hotter of course, maybe not considering the rumours we're hearing concerning the cooler, the hybrid cooler, and this thing is looking to be an absolute monster, because we're you know, we knew that AMD's cards on the previous generation were really bad in terms of TDP at times. They did somewhat help them um, with third-party coolers, but even so, they were considered to be the hotter and noisier out of the two between Maxwell and, uh, or sorry, I say Kepler and, uh, say, Hawaii. The other reason that this is incredibly impressive, and probably the thing that I'm most excited about, is that the drivers are still in beta. Now, if you've been PC gaming for any length of time, or even if you've been into tech any length of time, you'll know the drivers mature. So the fact of the matter is, these drivers are still in production. They have not been finalized. This means that theoretically, we um, and once again, it could be that this is the results we actually realistically get, or it could be that we can see up to 10, 20% more um, performance on the final retail drivers. And additionally, this is still them testing the hardware, uh, the chips. So it could be, and I'm just using pure numbers, this is not confirmed or leaked, this is just me throwing numbers out there. It could be that 
at the moment they're running it at one gigahertz in clock speed and the actual final production when they get you know better um, when they basically get better at manufacturing the chips and their yields get more refined they might even be able to get it all the way up to let's say 1100 megahertz which would be quite impressive especially um, the fact that they keep putting this as simple so it could be that um, it's basically the the chip before let's say they've even got boost technologies in that type of thing either way this is incredibly impressive what does it mean to you if you are in the market for a graphics card whether it's um, nvidia or amd you should wait even if you don't want amd let's say that you're the biggest i don't know let's say you've got a g-sync monitor and you absolutely must positively have nvidia because let's just even assume that you love hardware physics or you'll need it for some other particular reason i would still wait because we know when they release this it won't be too long um before nvidia announce the ties the 980 ties and they of course will be quite monstrous as well as generally the ties and once again generally is not always but generally they're about 15 percent faster sometimes 20 percent than the base so for example the 780 in this uh very slide managed to get 44.8 Whereas the TIE, the 780 TIE, managed to get 52.6. So you can kind of see where I'm going with this. It could well be that we end up with a card from both that are going to be very competitive and therefore it's going to come down in price, get down to price rather than performance. And that's a very good situation for both AMD and you as a consumer. I say that because we want AMD to be competitive. The reason you want AMD to be AMD to be competitive is so that you as a consumer are not beholden to the pricing of just one um, one company. It's really bad. It's the same reason that you want the PS4 and the Xbox One to be successful in the marketplace. It just makes both companies work harder and the drivers. It means that the PC space expands faster, which is always a really good thing, at least in my personal opinion. So as I said, these reports are are not you know confirmed by AMD but it's looking pretty genuine and another reason that I feel that these are going to be pretty accurate is because a while back back when they announced the two uh, 80x AMD also said that the two that the 390x was going to be competitive to the next generation Titan which of course hasn't been announced yet and also naturally the 980 ties because they want to compete at the highest end most consumers don't buy 980 ties most consumers don't buy titans but what they do is they act as like the pr piece where everyone's like oh nvidia have the fastest card or amd have the fastest card and then of course it comes down to the value segment so it's really it's really important to get that in what i'm personally hoping is that AMD can get the yields pretty pretty much down to pat because they are supposedly going for a 20nm process so I'm really hoping that they get the yields down fairly well and additionally I'm really hoping that we're going to see a lot of performance um, over the next year because to be honest graphics card performance it's been okay but I really want to see like the next the next stage um, so it's going to be quite interesting I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens uh, interestingly enough as well it turns out that 1440p the average vram usage on the gtx 980 um which once again they've benchmarking a variety of different games but the average vram usage is 2.8 or almost 2.9 actually gigabytes of vram so it does show that you know, I've personally got a GTX 780 Ti at the moment, and I'm basically waiting until next year to upgrade. Um, so I've got the free gig model, and it, it it's basically the point where in most games I I I don't really feel because I'm running most stuff at 1080p for obvious reasons with YouTube and stuff. But um, most stuff it's absolutely fine. 
But I think once two years time, four gigs is really going to be the absolute minimum that we're going to be expecting. And 4K, you know, it's not going to be too long now before graphics cards are 4K. But really and truly, um, what's impressive to me is that if we look at the performance of this card, you've got the 780, just the standard 780, the SLI running at 75.7 .7 frames a second. Uh, once again, average through this test. That's that's basically 10 frames per second faster than Captain Jack. And just to reiterate, a Captain Jack is a single card. And yet, it's only a little bit behind a 780 SLI rig. And that is incredibly impressive. Um, at least in my mind. So, hopefully, we will have a situation where crossfire, crossfire scaling is really good on Captain Jack. Or whatever it ends up being called. And yeah, so... I, for one, welcome this uh, card into the AMD fold, assuming it's true, and hopefully it is accurate, because if it is, that means we're going to be in for a hell of a lot of uh, fun for the next couple of months for, um, you know, watching as AMD and NVIDIA try to outdo each other in the hearts and minds and the wallet, which is just as important for gamers. Anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. So anyway, if you could do the normal rate, comment, subscribe. I would love you forever and ever. Anyway, take care. Bye for now.